Good morning, this is week 22, day two, 2024. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we ask that as we think about what it means to follow and to serve our King, that you would help us this day to trust in your work despite the circumstances of the world, uh, that you might be glorified, that we might trust you more as we consider the, the ways you've worked throughout all of history. We pray that you would give us eyes to see and hearts that would understand and minds that would be conformed and transformed that we might know you and love you more this day. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. First Kings chapter 1. You'll find that sometimes certain chapters are a lot more difficult to think through these questions of what do we learn about God or people, about relating to God, about relating to others. And um, so I'm going to try and, and help stir our thinking on this text. You might come up with different conclusions than me, as always. Um, but one of the things that this sort of a, a mess of what's happening here as, as David is nearing the end of his life. Uh, there's, there's lots of problems there with humanity and uh, perhaps David's failure to uh, treat his son uh, correctly in his upbringing, never correcting him perhaps, um, uh, whether, whether or not we want to read into that. But first and foremost, we have to recognize that even in this messy situation that we find here in 1 Kings chapter 1, just as you can see, say, if you go back to uh, Genesis and you see the mess of the situations that are happening there uh, with Jacob and Esau and the, the conflict and so forth, God is, God is still at work on all of that. And, and he is here too. As you've got these handful of people uh, going with one of David's children, okay, here again, implications of uh, learning about people, okay, that, that everyone has this the desire for renown, for power, for authority, for uh, relationships, all those things, wealth, come into play here because, you know, had David been faithful and had he not had multiple wives, uh, how much of this would have been taking place. So there, you have that piece of things as well. You, you have this whole desire for revolution through Adonijah and his little uh, group of people who decide to kind of back him to usurp the throne. Um, that this conniving, uh, treacherous plot-making schemes that we've got going on here these show up again and again because the scriptures, remember, show for us the reality and the depth of human sin. It does not whitewash people. It does not attempt to make it seem like everybody was just great. Uh, it paints the, the depth of human wickedness and God's work through and around and against at times that very same human component in order to further to bring forward his plan and his purposes. And that's one of the things I think we can see in this text when it comes to God being at work through these imperfect situations and these imperfect people. Now, what, why, do I, why do I say that as we, we see these two clashes taking place? Well, if you jump back uh, to 2 Samuel chapter 12, and we pick up verse 24 and 25. David comforted his wife Bathsheba, went in to lay with her. She bore a son. He was named Solomon. Now pay attention to the last half of verse 24 into verse 25. And the Lord loved him, that is Solomon, and sent a message by Nathan the prophet. So he called his name Jedidiah because of the Lord. And Jedidiah means beloved of the Lord. So right here in 2 Samuel chapter 12, we recognize Solomon 
is particularly received the Lord's favor, not Adonijah. And so you can see here, like with Jacob and Esau, God's intention was for a certain one of them to be the next in line. With, with Jacob and Esau, the next to be in line of the covenant. Here, the next king to sit on the throne of Israel. And so despite the, the power struggle that is going on here, uh, it is the Lord's will who is ultimately working out through this. I think this means that when we consider uh, how we relate to God, what do we learn about that? We have to recognize that there are some people who will misrepresent proper ways to relate to God, proper means to know God's will, uh, proper ways of, of growing in our understanding of ourselves or of God. This is especially true when you find people who are willing to be uh, syncretic in their beliefs, just as we saw in Israel, willing to bring things that are unbiblical into their understanding of Christianity, uh, how we evaluate ourselves, there's a lot of this with numerology or astrology, those sorts of things today. Uh, this is what we typically categorize under the New Age movement, that people are willing to add that to their Christian belief system and supplement the scriptures, supplement the church, supplement the Holy Spirit with all of these worldly things and then believe that this is a right understanding of ourselves and of God. And so we have to be aware of people who will convey this sort of stuff to us. As we see here that uh, Adonijah is aided by a priest. Now, one of the people who ought to be the ones who are teaching the correct word of God to Israel. Uh, here you have this priest who's willing to side with Adonijah, uh, willing to try and help him gain power uh, over any of other David's children, in particular the Solomon, Jedediah, as we see named there. And so that's something that we have to remember, uh, even today, that there are people who are just like Abiathar, the priest, uh, who might uh, even be people who, who are in positions of authority, who are putting forward false views and false ideas. Uh, what do we learn about relating to others? I want to jump down to the tail end of this chapter um, for, for this particular point. King Solomon sent, they brought uh, him down from the altar. Oh, let me back up a little bit. Solomon said, if he will show himself a worthy man, Adonijah, not one of his hairs shall fall to the earth, but if wickedness is found in him, he shall die. So King Solomon sent, they brought him down from the altar. He came and paid homage to King Solomon. And Solomon's response was, go to your house. In other words, he extends mercy to him. He, he gives him grace. If you're familiar uh, with what's going to come in the near future, you'll know that Adonijah does not uh, respond well to that grace. He continues in his wickedness. Uh, but Solomon's point here of, of demonstrating, of showing forth mercy and forgiveness, grace, is something that ought to mark our lives as Christians too. And I thought that was a nice little thing for us to, to be reminded of as we think about Solomon's interactions here. Uh, very briefly, as we think about application, I'm going to sort of, uh, without a lot of leeway, uh, direct us to Christ in, in the New Testament. Um, first of all, recognize that if God could be at work in a situation like what you find here in 1 Kings chapter 1, he can certainly be at work in all of the situations that we find ourselves in today. The, the messy, you know, conniving, scheming, everything else uh, that, that we find happening here, that we see happening today. It's a reminder, I think, that we are to avoid those sorts of schemes and, and particularly people who would seek to oppose God. And quite the contrary, uh, the, the New Testament reminds us that we ought to pray for our leaders, not to scheme and, and plot against them recognize uh, that all of these Old Testament kings, even when they were at their best, were only ever pointing forward to a greater king to come. 
our Lord Jesus, who extends mercy and grace to all of us when we are the offenders, in whom wickedness is found, and yet he still uh, forgives us on account of, of his work. And so just as we see here, you know, the, the paying homage to King Solomon, even if it's maybe just a show in this context here with Adonijah, uh, that our desire ought to be to follow the Lord's anointed, uh, to serve our king, and to do away with this desire to rule that, that is innate in us as fallen humanity ever since the garden and that inheritance of Adam's original sin. So I, I hope that was uh, helpful uh, to kind of think through uh, some application-oriented ideas of 1 Kings chapter 1. Let's pray. Gracious God, we do ask uh, that you would help us uh, to be mindful, uh, to pay attention, and to discern our lives, uh, to pray for our leaders, uh, to extend mercy and forgiveness, and to trust that you are it's still at work even in this uh, messy world today. Uh, would you help us to grow, uh, to understand, to be changed, to follow you? In Christ's name we pray. Amen.